Oh. Oh. Oh, you bastard. Oh. Oh. That's a cheap shot. Oh. Bandana Wallaby is by far one of the most requested newcomers to Smash Ultimate, and since Final Pass 2 is still in development, I had the interesting idea to make my own moveset for the titular D. Though, I today, I'm not just going to talk about it in theory, no. Something even better than that, I'm going to show it live on camera, using my trusty- Oh, these, these birds. Hey yo, kaka, kaka, subscribe, kaka, kaka, shut up! Don't talk bad to me! Using my trusty bow staff and whatever else I could find in my mom's basement, I went outside for the first time in years and replicated Bandandi's Fee Radical moveset in real life to the best of my abilities. Before we begin, I'm going to give a brief overview of the character and express why I personally would love to see Bandana Wallaby come to Smash one day. Kirby and Super Smash Brothers are two franchises that I hold dear to me since I've been playing their games for many years and they've helped me grow an audience on this beautifully broken platform known as YouTube. So I figured starting this series off with one of my favorite Kirby characters would be rather fitting. Bandana D is canonically Kirby's best friend, which by itself is quite the achievement. I mean, if I was buddies with the slayer of countless dark deities that had a pocket dimension in his stomach, then I'd more than gladly put that on my resume. I know plenty of people take a look at this dude and simply call him a wild dude with a bandana, but there is so much more than that! Play literally any Kirby game release on the Wii and 3DS, and you'll see Bandana D join the pink puffball on his pop star saving endeavors, assisting him in battle with his trusty spear and parasol. He even offers Kirby some food whenever his buddy is in need of some snacks. Return to Dreamland is what really cemented him as one of the main characters of the franchise, expanding the titular trio of Kirby, King Dedede, and Mennonite into a Dreamland Quartet. Spanning much further back to Kirby's resurgence on the N64, there's a cutscene where Kirby finds a lone Wallaby who's possessed by dark matter, and that D is believed to be Bandana D. After saving him from matter's villainous clutches, he decides to join the party, and if the theory proves to be true, then Bandana D has quite a rich history with the Kirby franchise. If all of that didn't and give enough reasons as for why he should be in Smash, then I have one last crucial point to bring up that will instantly change the opinions of any and all naysayers. He is very cute, and I like him a lot, and I think he's neat, and he's shaped like a friend. I'm going to break down each character's potential moveset into three categories. Normal moves, which pertain to any move that involve the A button, specials that utilize the B button, and characteristics that basically combine everything else that make a character who they are, whether that be taunts, victory animations, final smashes, grabs, but works. Starting off, we have his jab. Bandana D will use his classic sphere to thrust forward with enough force to push both his enemies and himself in the direction he's facing, with his rapid jab being a flurry of pokes that'll act the same as his regular jab would. Alongside his sphere, his trusty umbrella will also play a major role in his moveset. Beginning with his dash attack, he'll swoop either left or right with a burst of speed using his parasol, spinning as he moves forward. Just to note as well, all his parasol related attacks will be accompanied with a swirl of stars to match his cutesy visuals from Star Allies. This doesn't pertain to anything really unique or vital, I just think it looks really cute to be honest. This will act as a simple poking tool with a lot of distance which will allow Bandana D to outrange his opponents while remaining mobile on the ground. And yes, his spear being used as a spear poking things from a safe distance is going to be a common theme here. I admit the normals aren't the most creative in terms of application, but that's where his signature special moves come into play. This will be his only move where he utilizes one of the most staple abilities of both Kirby and Waddle Doos. That being the Beam Rod, which will act similarly to Zero Suit Samus' Plasma Whip. This attack will linger for a very long time and its hitboxes will constantly fluctuate in damage and knockback, which will lead into different combo paths and scenarios. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any spare Beam Rods in my mom's basement, so I had to take some, uh, creative liberties. You know, I'm just starting out with this concept, please just give me some credit for making it this far. <laughs> I tried my best to avoid directly copying any of Kirby's moves into Bandandi's moveset, and this is technically not an exception to that. Kirby has the ability to slide on his feet, creating enough force to break through blocks and enemies in most of his games, and it would make complete sense for Bandana D to be able to do the same for his down tilt. Everyone can admit that these two incredibly adorable orbs are very similar in shape, size, and design, meaning that it wouldn't be the stretch of the imagination for Wildies in general to possess similar qualities to Kirby. Though with this logic, I don't want any smart Alex in the comments saying that D and every single character in Smash should have deep breathing as one of their moves because they can convert oxygen into carbon dioxide just like we fit can. Back on track, the down tilt would send at a diagonal angle that could force attack out from his opponents at low percents, while being a potential kill move at higher percents that can also be used as a move to two frames on the ledge. To summarize my thoughts about this move, Kirby and Bandana D are both friend-shaped, so they can both use friend-esque attacks. 
I'm sure this makes sense to someone watching, so we're gonna keep moving forward and not rewrite anything of this script. Okay, moving on. Forward smash is simple but effective, with Bandana D thrusting and swirling his umbrella forwards. If you hold the A button after the attack, he'll keep on spinning his parasol, acting as a constant hitbox, which will have similar properties to DDD's fur jab as he constantly rotates it, combating anyone foolish enough to approach him. The actual move's animation will be slightly dramatized in size and power due to the nature of his up smash, which I am very excited to unveil because it harnesses the most powerful energy known to all mankind. Anyone have any guesses? Anyone? Well, I'm sure most Kirby enthusiasts got it right since it's the power of mother friendship! To any Poyo plebeians who aren't aware of what I'm talking about, here is the Chumbrella. With the aid of his companions, he can expand his umbrella to unimaginable sizes. Or, I mean one size, but it's pretty freaking big. It's incredibly resourceful of how it can block projectiles like rain, which his regular umbrella can't do already for some reason, as well as protect his buddies acting as a shield. The move would start out small for a few frames, and then expand in size, sucking in anyone near it. Its unique property is that if you hold the A button and up on a control stick, then Bandandi will walk around with the Chumbrella, which will have a constant hitbox over him, making it hard for most opponents to land against him. And you can simply press down to cancel it. Obviously, you can't crouch with it or else you'd be nearly impenetrable, and then no one's gonna have any fun after he gets one hit on you and then proceeds to camp you up for 7 minutes straight. But the move itself is very strong, it has a lot of coverage, and it even blocks projectiles as well. My idea of Bandandi's down smash would be really interesting for an attack of this category, since it won't just have him twirl his spear underneath him covering both of his sides and have a wind box that sucks in approaching opponents, but it will also create a burst of air projecting him high into the sky. This allows Bandana D to get a potential follow up after launching himself and his opponent. Another unique quirk that may or may not be complete overkill is how charging the move affects the size of a tornado and how high Bandana D flies. Holding it for less than a second results in a small wind gust that has set knockback, making it a great combo starter, but hold it a little longer and the tornado will get a whole lot bigger dealing a ton more damage and launching Bandana D super high. This air blast will also be quicker than his jump, so it can also be used as a way to gain extra height off the ground while having access to both of his jumps as well as his up special. The combo potential for this character is going to be absolutely ridiculous, and I am absolutely here for it. I don't know how the hell I thought of any of his stuff, but you know what, I'm just here for the ride. Forward air and back air would be very similar in execution and range, with Bandana D simply thrusting either in front or behind him. As par for smash standards, the back air will come out just a tad bit slower, but will deal increased damage and knockback compared to his faster front-facing equivalent. And the sweet spot will lie in the blade itself, while the rest of the staff will be inputted as a weaker hitbox. Remember when I said forward tilt would be the only time Bandana D would use a beam rod? Well, I lied, because it makes a return in his neutral air. Bandana D will spin in a circle almost like Curry's Nair in Ultimate, but a little slower. The beam rod would cover a little more than half of his body throughout the move's duration, so it would have a slight weakness while being difficult to penetrate. But the move lasts for a very long time is a great multi-hit that sucks in opponents, as well as combos very effectively at low and mid percents. Just like his previous aerials, up air is pretty self-explanatory. He jumps and pokes his spear in the air. Okay, look, I can't make every single move in this kit be the most spontaneous and flashiest move we've ever seen, but I'm trying my best here, okay? Actually, wait, I take that back. Bandandi summons the Wrath of the Dreamland Gods as he majestically and assertively thrusts his signature polearm with the might of the entire halberd. Any foolish foes who dare to throw hands with the mightiest of all wildies will be utterly obliterated, brandishing them with enough holes to scar them with trypophobia for the rest of their miserable days. Alright, was that climatic enough? Good? Great, okay, now we can move on to the last move in his normal section. Bandana D will descend diagonally with his parasol covering most of his body on the way down. This move is a personal favorite of mine since he just looks so gosh darn cute as he tucks himself in his little umbrella as he gracefully swoops downwards. This won't spike like most downward aerials, so instead it'll act as a constant hitbox as it's descending. It can also be auto-canceled similarly to Sheik and Zero Suit Samus' down air if timed properly. It does have quite a big landing hitbox, so it's relatively safe to land with unless it gets too predictable and but it can be shielded pretty easily. That covers all the normal moves, let's move on to the specials. If you've been watching up to this point in the video, then it's pretty obvious that Bandandi really knows how to poke things with his pointy stick. 
So why don't we spice it up a little and have him throw it with his neutral special? Acting as a direct callback to the spear copy ability, Bandandy can throw one spear by pressing the B button. If you hold the button down, then you can throw multiple spears at the same time at various speeds and angles. This will be a great way to cover a bunch of ledge options, control the stage, and zone out opponents in a not too volatile way. Bandandy will vigorously spin his spear with enough force to propel himself in the air for quite a long time. He'll have a boost in speed and aerial mobility, allowing him to extend combos and have an easier time landing back on stage. For some extra distance, he can charge up his recovery for a few seconds, but it will leave him vulnerable since the move will take longer to start up. Plus, if you charge it off stage, then you'll be continuously falling without any way to act out of it until you let go of the input. So you're somewhat of a sitting duck, but you do get yourself a better recovery if you hold down and risk it more. Hey, you guys wanna hear a funny joke? Kirby Battle Royale! We might as well throw that game into this disturbingly powerful melting pot by making Bandanity's side special the Aqua Shot. Bringing back the parasol, Bandanity charges up a big swing that launches a large water projectile towards wherever he's facing. It'll take two seconds to activate the move, and it can be angled in multiple ways. The water ball has a huge blast radius, and it'll launch enemies based on where they'll get hit. If it lands on the left or right of an enemy, then it'll blast him into that direction, which also means getting hit right in the center will launch someone straight up. This move will have a lot of startup, and it'll take a long time for it to hit, so if you get hit by it, it's your fault. No complaints. You see, I knew I could make a projectile move for this character that doesn't seem all that volatile. This last special move is where things get a little bit crazy. With down special, Bandanity can call upon his friends to imbue his spear with a wide variety of elements for 10 seconds, ranging from fire, electricity, water, and ice. Each element affects each one of his spear moves in different ways, which I'll now break down because there's a lot to get through. Fire makes his spear deal more damage as well as apply lingering damage that lasts for a few seconds. Unique to fire, with his neutral B, the spears he throws will leave little flames that will also apply the same lingering damage whenever someone touches it. Electricity makes his spear apply more hit stun. With this buff, anyone who gets poked by this giant freaking taser won't be able to add out of their getting damage animation for a much longer time, allowing Bandandi to access new combo routes and have an overall easier time landing already guaranteed follow-ups. Water will act similarly to the ailment Water Blight from the Monster Hunter series. In these games, getting hit by a strong water-based attack will slow down stamina regeneration and overall movement of your character, so the same will be applied here in Smash. His watery spear will slow down his opponents, decreasing their movement and airspeed for limited time. Similarly to Monster Hunter, this debuff will also make everyone's animations slower overall. Basically, imagine inflicting that one bad Hocus Pocus effect from Hero's Kid with a projectile. Okay, yeah, maybe I made this character a little too good, <laughs> uh, but we still have one more element to cover. Finally, we have ice. Its properties will simply freeze people into an ice block. You could theoretically use this rapid jab with ice imbued to apply the ice effect whenever you'd like, but all of Bandandi's spear moves will be a lot slower compared to any other variation of the weapon. There's a huge payoff to landing these attacks, but it also limits your move set at the same time, so be sure to lose it accordingly when your opponent is close to losing their stock. You're all probably wondering how I'm going to ensure that I accurately make these moves in real life. Well, to do it all justice, I bought a taser! For electricity, I just taped the taser to my staff, but don't worry, I made sure it was perfectly safe. I had my mom drop water balloons on me to showcase water. Want that? Yeah. Oh god! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Keep going! <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I attached a bag of ice for ice, which worked surprisingly well. And finally, for fire, I used the power of video editing to lessen the risk of setting my backyard ablaze. Now all of this sounds ridiculously broken, and I'm in no way denying that, because I'm pretty sure it is. The only solutions I can think of are to either have the move have a cooldown after each time it's used, so you can't just always use a better version of his spear, or to take a simpler approach and have Bandandi only be able to use his four elements once per stock. These both feel like rather lazy and gimmicky ways to balance this move, so I'd rather go for a different solution altogether. If anyone watching has any suggestions as to how to make this move not completely busted, then please let me know with a comment below. I think I gave enough screen time to Bandandi's spear, Spear. So let's talk about his grabs utilizing his parasol. Bandanity will scoop up whoever he's trying to grab and spin them on his umbrella. And from there, you'll have the option to toss from to the left or right as a forward or back throw. And down throw will basically be a much less painful version of Bowser Jr.'s down throw, with Bandanity spinning on top of his opponent, launching them away. I'm sure most people would prefer to take this parasol over a giant drill to the spine. Up throw will be Bandanity's most unique grab. He'll send his opponents upwards, but the special thing about it is that if he's fast enough, then he 
he can down smash after the grab to give him a quick burst of height to start a combo from the grab. For example, you could do up throw into down smash, which will then follow up from the boost of height from the wind gust into something like nair, forward air, or up air if the percent's really high and the opponent's really floaty or something of the like. But point being, there could be a lot of great combo potential to come out of this moveset. Finally, for his pummel, D will thrust his parasol upwards slightly, putting the grab E in a juggling animation. Bandana D is fed up with the constant slander from the masses. He is more than a fashionable Goomba, and he will have his name tarnished no longer. For Bandana D's final smash, he pulls out a few bricks and performs the Megaton Punch. Calling all the way back to the titular D's very first appearance in the Kirby franchise, the player will try to press a button when the power meter is full, when the circle lines up with the outline, and when the reticles align with each other. The amount of damage and knockback this move deals will be purely based on how well the player times these skill checks. And if they time everything perfectly, then Bandana D will literally break Popstar in half. How about I go try doing this in real life? Somehow. You know, I can probably break a planet, maybe like, get a good dent in it or something. Cha! 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 It's 3 in the goddamn morning, I'm gonna go outside. Or actually, I'm gonna go to bed, then I'm gonna go outside. Hey, there we go. <laughs> hey. Now, imagine Bandandy doing this, but it breaks an entire plan in half. You know, close enough. Oh my god, I actually somehow managed to make all of those moves. We just about covered everything in Medandy's moveset, so all that's left is to showcase some more of his characteristics. We got his taunts, with his up taunt being him happily posing as he's about to start a new battle. Wanya! Side taunt will have Kirby run onto the stage to give Bandandy a high five, referencing when they first met in Kirby 64 in the Crystal Shards. And down taunt will make D wave with his arms up towards the players, similar to Kirby's own down taunt. His shielding animation will reference Parasol's block in Kirby Fighters 2 of how he holds out his parasol covering his whole body. And last but not least, we have his eight alternate costumes. I made these myself, so apologies if they seem a little rough, but going down the list, we got his red and white costume that uses the Parasol D's umbrella colors, the pink, yellow, blue, and green alts are in reference to Kirby, Kibi, Kabi, and Kusomochi, which are for canon names for all of Kirby's alternate colors. The gray alt is what I'd imagine Bandanity would look like on a Game Boy. And finally, there's his brown costume that copies Wild Dude's color scheme. And that long last, that wraps up Bandana Wild Dude's theoretical moveset. I hope y'all enjoyed watching the video, and if you think it's gonna make an E3 this year, or at all in general, then please let me know in the comment below. Hopefully this year we get some insight regarding our favorite Waddle D about possibly joining the roster one day. And if it doesn't, who knows, man? Who freaking knows? We got Minecraft D, we got Sands, anything's in the realm of possibility at this point. We're all rooting for you. You can do this. I believe in you. My productivity is absolutely horrendous, so this video took me infinitely longer than I anticipated originally. But I really hope you all enjoyed watching it because I have never put this much love and care and effort into a video in my entire five years on YouTube and I really would love to do more stuff like this. So if you have a character you like me to make another moveset for as well as perform the moves in real life for it, then feel free to also comment whoever you want to see next down below in the comments. And of course, subscribe, like the video, turn on the bell, all of those nifty YouTuber things. All that stuff, you know what to do at this point. Before I go, just a few more things. Thank you so very much to Zelda Cantal and Kuromichu for making all the art for this video. It was a blast working with you both. Thank you so freaking much. Kuromichu made the backgrounds for the video and Zelda made all of the sprites, all the bandandy pictures for all the moves. And I cannot thank you both enough for your support. Finally, as you can guess, I have a lot of leftover footage from this video from a lot of reshoots and a lot of retakes and a lot of script recording, yada yada yada. The point is, I'm going to make a video compiling all of the extra goody stuff and I'm going to put it on my newly reopened Patreon. That's where I'm going to reopen it and I'm going to make secondary content again and put it all on there, including this. So whenever I make a moveset maker video, I'll have a secondary video on there exclusive for patrons where I just post all the extra stuff, all the assets I made, like the PSD files for the alternate costumes I made, all of the extra footage that I had to cut out to save time, all of the retakes, all the times I recorded stuff for my scripts, all of that good stuff. So if anyone's interested in looking at all that side content, then go to the link below in the description and check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Vernius. Meanwhile, you gotta go prepare for E3 right now, so with that being said, I will see you all in the next video. Alright, best of luck for hunting Bandana Dean to Smash, guys. 
See you all next time.